The wheels that come on your Jeep have a lot of backspacing, about six inches. And if you want to run bigger tires, you're going to need to get a new set of wheels that have less backspacing or you can get a set of these. These are a set of wheel spacers that I bought on Amazon and they're made by Spider Tracks. Now, there are a lot of wheel spacers out there that can probably even be had for less, but not all of them are made out of 6061 T6 aluminum, or maybe more importantly, made in the USA. Now, I should note that these particular spacers are made for a JL Wrangler, and that means they come in a five on five bolt pattern with 14 millimeter studs. Now, depending on what Jeep you have, there are variations to the bolt pattern and the stud thickness. So depending on what Jeep you have, you wanna make sure that you get the right spacers for what you need. Let a little more light in here. That's better. So I know what you're thinking. We've got aftermarket wheels with a lot less backspacing. Why do we need wheel spacers? And there's actually a reason to have a lot of backspacing, or at least as close to stock as possible, and the biggest of which is that it'll help you to maintain your scrub radius, which gives you better turning, or maybe more importantly, it'll help prevent the premature wear of your ball joints and unit bearings. But being that we just installed a brand new Evo long arm system with their coilovers, we are starting to see some rubbing at a full flex and a full turn. Now, Installing a set of 1250 Nitto trail grapplers did help, but what we really need is a little less backspacing. So unlike a set of brand new wheels that can cost a pretty penny, wheel spacers like this are relatively affordable and are super easy to install. But whatever you decide to get, you wanna make sure you get the kind that actually bolt up to your axle and then your wheels to it. What you don't want are the kind of spacers that get sandwiched in between your axle and your wheels as that'll leave you with very little threads on your wheel stud to work with and that could be potentially dangerous. The lug nuts won't have a whole lot to grab onto and it can cause a failure. Now if you have a JK Wrangler or older model Jeep, you will have what are called assembly washers on the wheel studs and those will need to be removed before you can install the wheel spacers. On a JL Wrangler like you see here, there are these set screws that secure the rotors to the axles so you won't need to deal with any of that. You can pretty much just bolt these on. Alright, so to install your wheel spacers, all you need to do is place it onto your axle over the wheel studs. Make sure that it's nice and flush and that the wheel studs aren't protruding past the spacer itself. And then you're gonna to wanna to take your lug nuts that are provided along with the red Loctite provided and apply some of the stuff on the threads as you see here. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and install these with the conical end of the lug nuts going inward. All right, so it's pretty important that you get a 22 millimeter socket that's got a thin wall like you see right here because the holes on the wheel spacer itself are pretty narrow. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna zip these guys on just lightly. And we're going to do this in a star pattern, which means we're going to go directly across. 
So now the JL Wrangler has 14 millimeter wheel studs and the factory service manual recommends that you tighten up your lug nets to 130 foot pounds of torque. Now if you've got a JK or TJ or otherwise, you will only have 13 millimeter or half inch wheel studs and those will need to be tightened up to about 110 foot pounds of torque and you're going to be using a 19 millimeter socket instead of a 22. But being that we do have a JL, we're going to go ahead and set our torque wrench again to 130 foot pounds of torque. And then again, we're going to go ahead and tighten up our lug nuts in a star pattern. All right, so now we can go ahead and reinstall our wheel. And then just like before, on the wheel spacer itself, we're going to go ahead and tighten our wheel lug nuts to 130 foot-pounds of torque. All right, now we can go on to the front. All right, so now we can go ahead and tighten up these lug nuts to 130 foot-pounds of torque, just like we did on the rear. But unlike the rear where you have an emergency brake and you can actually put it in park, there's nothing up front to keep your wheel from spinning. So it makes it quite difficult to actually tighten up those lug nuts. Now there are guys out there who will tell you that you should install some of these lug nuts from your wheels and then maybe take a pry bar to kind of help you along, but it's totally unnecessary. All you really need to do is have a friend step on your brake because that'll give you enough pressure to get these lug nuts tightened. Or if you're by yourself, you can take your transfer case and shift it into four wheel drive. As you can see with your transfer case engaged, front axle isn't going to move. So again, we're going to use our 22 millimeter socket. And there you have it. And this is what some people would refer to as the untucked look, what we prefer.